Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. This topic is super important. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, we're going over an important integrative medicine topic today. We are, and I'm so excited about it. Let's do it. What is it? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the labs to look at for optimal thyroid balance. Okay. Specifically, focusing in on something called reverse T3. Okay. Okay. Can I... I'm going to make an assumption, and you can tell okay. me if I'm wrong. Okay. Is this something that people come in to see you for that is one of the more often misdiagnosed things? Uh, if they're, Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I'm wording my it's, it's assumption wrong. It's missed often. Okay. It's okay. not looked at. Okay. Um, and so I'll, we'll go through kind of more traditional approach versus the way that we do things. But yes, absolutely. This is something that we do that's very different, but absolutely needed. I just feel like there's a lot of people with thyroid issues who have no idea that they have a thyroid issue. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Let's do it. So talking about people with thyroid issues, one in 300 people in the U.S. are diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Mm. But honestly, I think that this is actually way lower. I think it would be a lot higher with appropriate full testing and oh. more, more appropriate diagnosis. Like there are more people that have hypothyroidism that are told that they don't because their labs are normal. Got it. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. That's what we, yeah. Yeah. So diagnostic criteria is really broad. So a lot of patients will have symptoms. They come into their doctor and patients know what hypothyroidism is. Yeah. Symptoms of like fatigue and hair loss and weight gain and just feeling really sluggish. It just yeah. kind of slows everything down. Patients will come into their doctor and be like, hey, will you check my thyroid? Yeah. And doctors will do it. They'll look at a TSH level and they'll say, yeah, you're within normal. It's totally fine. Yeah. Normal versus optimal are, is very, very different. And mm. we talk about this all the time. So like example, TSH, a normal level is 0. 0.5 to 4.5. An optimal level is 0. 0.5 to 1.5. Is oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's much, a huge difference. Much tighter control. Right. Whenever we're looking for optimal control on thyroid. So it's very, very different. Um, so uh, we'll review kind of what the basic thyroid hormones are that we're looking at in general. Okay. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. This is uh, produced in the anterior pituitary in the brain. So this is the signal that comes from the brain, goes down to the thyroid gland, and tells it to make thyroid hormone. Okay. okay. This is very standard across the board. Every provider who looks at thyroid looks at TSH. A lot of them only look at TSH, which is where the problem comes in. Okay. Then we have free T4. So T4 is one of the act, it's one of the two hormones produced by the thyroid. So it is when the TSH signal comes to the thyroid, the thyroid produces T4. Okay. 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 T4 is an inactive version of a thyroid hormone. So it doesn't do anything for us yet, but it's part of the process. So what I'm hearing is that you don't ignore T4. It right. just doesn't matter that much. It's not the most important piece of it. But you have to, you have we, to look at it. We got to look at it. Yeah. Okay. And so what T4 will tell us is if the thyroid is responding and producing the hormone it's supposed to be producing. Okay. So when we're looking at hypothyroidism, TSH goes up. It's an inverse relationship. So low thyroid function, TSH is high. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Your um, TSH is high. TSH is high okay. with low thyroid function because the brain has to keep telling the thyroid again and again, you need to do this, you need to do this. So that TSH signal coming from the brain to the thyroid goes up because the thyroid's not responding. It's kind of like insulin in a way, like you, random analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll follow yeah, up we on keep, that. We keep, it keeps sending that signal until the body responds to the signal. Okay. So with hypothyroidism, the thyroid's sluggish for whatever reason. There's lots of different reasons, but it's sluggish. So the thyroid's not responding quickly enough. Okay. And so the, the TSH keeps going up because it keeps sending that signal until the thyroid responds. Okay. T4, again, that's the hormone that's produced by the thyroid. So that lets us see if we have a normal T4 level, it lets us see is the thyroid actually producing the hormone is supposed to be producing. Okay, so okay? that's part of the equation. That's part of the equation. Then we have T3. So T3 is the most powerful and potent thyroid hormone in the body. Most of the T4 that's created by the thyroid goes out into the body and is uh, converted into T3. Okay. Okay, T3, again, active thyroid hormone. This is the driving force behind the thyroid. T3 is super important. So we're looking a lot at the T3, mm -hmm. and then we're looking at the T4 as some sort of like 
if something's happening with the T3, we're looking at T4. Absolutely. But we look at T3. Yes. Okay. T3 is super important. When you go to your typical, you know, primary care or endo, most of the time they're only looking at TSH and T4. So they've already stopped there. Okay. We're going on and looking at T3. That's the active driving force. And then the most important one really that gets missed all the time is reverse T3. Okay. So reverse T3 is a antithyroid metabolite that acts to block the thyroid function. Okay. Okay. Can, can you tell me, because you've mentioned metabolites uh, in a, a couple of our Explain mm -hmm. This episodes. What, what's a metabolite? It's just a breakdown. It's just a breakdown. Yeah. Okay. So the body takes T4 and it breaks it down either basically into T3 or reverse T3. Okay. 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 If we go to T3, we're getting that active thyroid function. If we go to reverse T3, we're putting the brakes on the thyroid function. Got it. Okay. Okay. So it's like a, a it, like I said, antithyroid. It's blocking things. There are uses for this. I mean, we need some reverse T3. If we had no reverse T3, then the body could amp up its T3 too much and we can go into hyperthyroid. Got it. So reverse T3 serves a function. The problem comes when we convert into too much reverse T3. And that would take away, so that would go to hypo. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we wouldn't know it unless we're looking at the reverse T3. Okay. And where do we like those numbers, the reverse T3? So reverse T3 in and of itself, I like to see less than 15, preferably less than 10. But the big part of it is actually looking at the equation of T3 to reverse T3. There's a ratio that we look at. Got it. That's the best way to look at this. Okay. Um, and so again, you know, reverse T3, super, super important. It's actually one of the more sensitive ways to look at the thyroid. We can detect a thyroid issue is starting to happen by looking at reverse T3 before we ever see it shown in like TSH. Interesting. So we can see an abnormal reverse T3 level that will be starting to create hypothyroid symptoms before we see it reflected anywhere else. And by abnormal, you're talking about the ratio. The ratio, it, an elevated reverse T3 in okay. and of itself, and then the ratio of T3 to reverse T3. Okay. Okay. So standard treatment, whenever you are diagnosed with hypothyroidism, is they're going to look at your TSH level, maybe your T4 level. If your TSH is over 4.5, and usually they make it happen a cut, like you have to repeat that a couple of times. But when your TSH is over 4.5 and you've got symptoms, they're going to start you on a synthetic T4. That's standard treatment. Okay. Synthroid levothyroxin, something like that. And this standard does work well for some people, but it's not for everybody. So this can leave a large amount of people who are treated for hypothyroidism, but still have hypothyroid symptoms with normal labs. That's got to be super frustrating. It is. And that's yeah. that's the people that usually end up with me because they tell me, you know, everything else checks out. My doctor says all my labs are normal, but I still feel terrible. Yep. What's going on? Mm -hmm. So the best approach for hypothyroidism is t checking your TSH, a free T4, okay. a free T3, and a reverse T3. So four different labs. Four different labs. Okay. I also get thyroid antibodies at least once to confirm that they're negative because then that goes into Hashimoto's. That's a whole other side of things. We've got a video on that. Okay. Uh, but when we're looking just at standard hypothyroidism, this is what we want to look at. Okay. Then we take that free T3 and that reverse T3 number and we do a calculation with it. Okay. So when we're looking at the labs, um, one of them, I can't remember, one of them is in picograms, one of them is in nanograms. Um, but you take your free T3 level, so say your free T3 is 2.8. That would okay. be a very average number, 2.81, 2.8, something like that. And you take your reverse T3, say that that's 20. You divide the T3 by the reverse T3. So what was the first number again? It was like 2.8. 2.8 divided by 20? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that would spit out a ratio of 0.14, or sometimes I'll convert it and put it into the two, into the hundredths. So I'll do 280 divided okay. by 20. Either, okay. either way is fine. So we want a ratio that is greater than 0 0.2 or greater than 20 if you've converted it. So again, if you're free, oh, if you've converted, if you've it, converted it, yeah. Okay. So if your free T3 level is 2.8, your reverse T3 level is 20. Your ratio is going to be 0 0.14. Okay? Got it. Ratio needs to be more than 0 0.2. 
So if we have this ratio of 0 0.14, that means that we have too much reverse T3 in the system, and that reverse T3 is going to compete for the receptor sites, and it's going to block the function of T3. Mm. So I explain it to my patients like it's puzzle pieces. T3 and reverse T3 are the last piece to a puzzle, and they both look exactly the same in shape. Both of them are going to fit into that last hole. Reverse T3 is completely blank. We're not finishing our picture. T3 finishes the picture. But if reverse T3 gets there first, T3 can't go in. Interesting. So okay. it's going to block up those receptors. It's not going to let T3 work. So again, this is where you can have very normal looking labs, but that elevated reverse T3 changes the whole scenario. Guys, if y'all want to pause this video and go get a notepad and <laughs> pencil, Write I would encourage <laughs> you to do so. Uh, that's super wild. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see how you know how easy it is to uh, to to not get diagnosed or oh, to, to be completely misled. Yeah, to get to be missed. And again, you know, a lot of providers will argue that this isn't necessary to look at, but I can tell you from my practice, this is absolutely necessary to look at. Mm. I'm able to fix people that are not getting fixed on their regular medicines because we find this portion of it. So a lot of the conversion of T4 into T3 happens in the gut and in the liver. Okay. Nobody has perfect gut and liver function. So if we're taking a synthetic T4 like Levo, Levothyroxine, it's really easy for that conversion process to get messed up. Okay. And there's other things that can mess up that conversion process as well. So um, things that can cause elevated reverse T3, messing up that conversion process, dieting and calorie restriction, which this is what so many hypothyroid patients will do because they're having trouble losing weight. So they're like, well, fine, I'm just going to go on this severe calorie restricted diet. And that just makes it worse. So we're increasing that reverse T3 even more. We're increasing those hypothyroid symptoms even more. The patient's not getting better. They may lose weight while they're dieting, but then as soon as they try to eat normal again, that weight comes right back on and we're caught in this vicious cycle. I'm picturing people being on a treadmill and literally just can't get off and yeah. nothing's improving. Yeah, absolutely. And being extremely frustrated. Uh, yes, absolutely. Goodness. Inflammation. We talk about inflammation all the time. Inflammation is the root of all evil in our yeah. bodies. So inflammation will also um, mess with that conversion process, increase reverse T3. N nutrient deficiencies. So big things that support thyroid conversion are going to be like zinc and selenium, vitamin E, vitamin A. So if we're deficient in any of those, that can cause some issues. Uh, like I said, intestinal dysfunction, lots of people have gut issues. Uh, at least 20% of the conversion is happening in the gut alone. So if we don't have a happy gut, if we've got some sort of dysbiosis or infection going on, that's going to mess with our conversion process as well. So your big goal with any of these thyroid patients is to get this th uh, get this conversion working right. Yes. And can you just, for, uh, for me, the conversion, which one to which one? T4 needs to go to T3. Okay. And if it's not, then it's going to reverse T3, and that's what we don't want much of. Got it. So we don't want it going to, re to reverse T3. Right. And if we see that it is, we make adjustments so that it goes it. To, to T3. Yes. Yes. I got it. I <laughs> got, got it. <laughs> so other things that can affect this as well, stress. I mean, who doesn't have stress? Right. Uh, but stress can have a major impact on thyroid conversion. So, you know, doing adrenal adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, you know, relaxation techniques, mild exercise, yoga, things like that can help to improve stress. Uh, lack of sleep can also do this. Again, who doesn't suffer from lack of sleep at some point? But if you have hypothyroidism, you really need to be trying to get at least seven to eight hours of good deep sleep every night to assist with this uh, appropriate thyroid conversion. Mm. Um, so then ways that we can help to lower reverse T3. So help to support that conversion, get those reverse T3 levels down. Got it. So now yeah. it's not about, now we need to lower the reverse T3. Yes. Okay. Yeah. With you. Uh, so number one and the easiest and fastest way to do it is to take a T3 containing medication. So sometimes uh, if my patients come in on levothyroxine and I see that they have a really high reverse T3, I'll switch them over to something like Armour Thyroid or NP Thyroid. Okay. This is a natural desiccated thyroid hormone and it, con it contains T4, but it also contains the active T3. 
Now, it doesn't have a ton of T3 in it, so for some people that's still not enough, but that is one switch we can do. You can also add on a medication called liothyronine or Cytomel, which is a synthetic version of the active T3. Okay. So if we push more T3 in there, we have more T3 competing for those receptor sites, we're flushing out the reverse T3. Mm. So that's, that's the easiest way, the fastest way, but it doesn't address the why. Why are we having these conversion issues to begin with? And that would be back to gut? Right. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, the nutritional deficiencies. So we can add on different supplements. Uh, zinc, 5 to 10 milligrams per day. Selenium, uh, usually around 100 to 150 uh, micrograms per day. Okay. Vitamin E uh, is usually, I dose it just by capsules, so three to four capsules per day. Vitamin A um, is another one, usually comes in drops, about 12 drops per day of vitamin A. All of those can help to support thyroid conversion really well. And would you do that along with the MP thyroid or the armor? Depends on the patient. Okay. Yeah, okay. it does. Uh, sometimes we'll just try that. Sometimes we'll add on uh, the liothyronine and sometimes we'll switch the medication completely. Are they going to be on a medication indefinitely or? There are situations where we can fix the underlying cause for the hypothyroidism and get off of medications completely. Okay. There are situations like that. Okay. So it's not like a foregone conclusion. I'm on this for forever. Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. But okay. Th there are plenty of patients that are on medication for hypothyroidism for the rest of their life. And so then we've got to balance those medicines. So they're doing their best job. Now for the people who, uh, so, so we mentioned four labs. Mm hmm um, what's kind of the time cadence that people need to recheck uh, to see if that reverse T3 is going down or that T3 is going up? Yeah. How, what's your time cadence like? Typically with thyroid, I repeat labs every 8 to 12 weeks until things are stabilized. Repeat every 8 to 12 mm -hmm. weeks? So every okay. 2 to 3 months, yeah. Okay. Okay. You can start noticing differences in how you feel with those changes within 2 to 3 weeks, but to actually see it leveled out on the labs and stabilized, eight to 12 weeks. Oh, that's super encouraging. Yeah. Two or three weeks, you're mm -hmm. starting to feel a little bit better. Yeah, you can feel it. I've had that's people awesome. tell me literally the first dose of T3, they feel better. That's incredible. Yeah, so it can make big differences. Um, other things that we can do also, working on hormones. I mean, that's a huge piece of what we do. So all of our hormones affect this, but especially insulin. So if we have insulin resistance, that's gonna lead to a lot of inflammation. That complicates hypothyroid, can increase reverse T3. Okay. Uh, addressing inflammation, so adding in supplements like omega, curcumin, quercetin, different things like that. Figuring out why we have the inflammation, so again, kind of circling back to the gut. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have undiagnosed food sensitivities? Um, again, you know, that insulin resistance. And then lifestyle changes, so like I said, get sleep, seven yeah. to eight hours of sleep, exercising but not over-exercising, that can put a lot of stress on the body. Mm. Uh, and eating a well-balanced diet, uh, tell people all the time you are what you eat if you're eating junk you're gonna feel like junk yeah I remember you telling my brother that uh, just a, just yeah. a couple months ago yeah and I'm pretty sure he picked up a milkshake right after that and started <laughs> yeah. drinking it so you know not everybody listens to me <laughs> <laughs> So that's the big things that I want people to know. Um, there are other ways to look at thyroid labs. If you're if you're going to someone and they're only looking at a little piece of this, they're missing pieces of the puzzle completely. We need to do the full thyroid panel. We need to be looking at that reverse T3 and making sure that we're getting that number worked out so that you can feel the best. You know what I think you just explained? What? Optimal thyroid balance. I think I did. Guys, this is optimal thyroid balance. What we're going to do in the description below is we're going to uh, link up our Hashimoto's Explain This video, where Robin dives into exactly what that is, how we diagnose it, how we treat it, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is a great pairing with this video. Robin, is that a show? That's a show. That's a show. Guys, you name it, we explain it. We'll see you next time. Don't go away.